We're going to look at a real common problem on the Sony Betamax with the 711B chassis, which was the one of the last generations, but a very popular one. This fault is when the machine stops playing. When you're on play, it'll play for a few seconds and stops, and sometimes you'll see the tape kind of spilling out around the pinch roller, and it'll kind of move and then stop and move and then stop and move and then stop. Okay, this is the fault with this. Here's how to fix it. I didn't put it in with the last video because I think this needs its own separate video. So this is the SLHF 1000 that the head drum was kind of foobarred on and we're not able to fix the head drum, at least not at this point in time. I need a new drum for it. But I figured this is a similar mechanism to all of them, the 711B chassis. This is a very common problem. So let's fix the real drive that causes a lot of problems. Here it is. Next thing we'll look at on this is the... Uh the real table motor assembly. This is a, a real common problem on these chassis. The, the tapes will get eaten, or the unit will play for a few seconds and stop, or sometimes it'll play for 20 or 30 seconds, but it'll eventually stop. What you need to do is you need to take out this assembly. four screws to hold it in place and then this should lift out if I'm not mistaken I should just lift straight out of course I had to pick a more difficult chassis to work on most of them they lift out a little easier than this but this whole bracket assembly with the motor and everything on it will lift out and uh, this is what we're looking at. I can unplug the plugs on this thing. Unplug over here. Yeah. I'll just free up some wires. Okay. This is what we need to lubricate on this. This pendulum gear. Sometimes these solenoids give trouble too, but not usually. Usually it's this pendulum gear. You remove the cut washer. You remove your pendulum gear here. And you want to lubricate the bearing here and you also want to lubricate this and to get at that you actually have to lift the reel tables off so we can lift the reel tables off by just releasing these little catches and this one here you got the brake tension band in the way but if we remove the brake tension band we can lift this one up as well if we lift, release the lock we can get this one out of the way like that these have a reflective coating on the bottom because there are optical sensors. That's what determines if the reel is turning or not. Now we can lift the stator apart on this one and it just, it just lifts off. It's just held in place magnetically. There's your bearing that you lubricate. There and there. And I don't really need to on this because this unit is not working but if I, you know, just to go through the motions, we'll put a drop of oil on there. We'll put our, again, be careful not to get any dirt on this thing, no metal particles or anything because they will stick to it. It's a magnet. Drop that back on there. Again, we can drop on our real tables again. And there's just a couple little catches you have to pull out of the way to they seem to drop down into place. And the other one's a little... I should drop that down. There we go. Make sure your brake tension goes around here and under this little lever. Like that. And the same goes for the other one. Again, you've got to Pull the. You got to remove. Pull this little lever back as well here. That one there. Otherwise, it won't drop all the way in. So we just pull that out of the way, and then use a little screwdriver or something to pull the other little brake away, and it will drop into place. I may make it look easy because I was a Betamax specialist. I trained at Sony on beta and that was that was where i got my actual vcr education was on beta 
I had to learn VHS myself, but I did the factory uh, Betamax course when I worked for Sony of Canada, and I uh, could take these things apart and put them together in my sleep. And you will see very soon. You're not going to see it in this video because we're going to do another video on this where we're going to do a head transplant and make it work. This mechanism is also mechanism is also a little more complex than I guess that lever I got to pull but than than the non-editing ones because the other uh, betas won't have as many solenoids and stuff on it as this one does to operate clutches and so forth. But this will drop back down into place if I can get it. Oh yeah, I got to get this lined up with the, the little holes on here. You see the little notches here. They have to line up with this clutch. So we got to pull this in place. Pull this lever in pull this lever back and line up the clutches and it'll drop in just like that okay now that's in place again drop of oil on here one thing you also want to do on these pendulum gears is you want to lubricate the actual gear itself and make sure that this has got a little bit of it'll have a little bit of tension on it but sometimes they this gets gummed up here so you can take this piece apart and clean off this pin and a little bit of oil on that pin, a little drop of oil on that pin. Just like that. Don't forget the washer that I just dropped on the bench there. The washer back on. Put that on. This is held in place by magnetic forces. There's a magnet on here that's held up against this little metal plate. And then the pendulum gear goes back on just like that. It sits between these two. Just like that. And then the cut washer to hold it in place. And that is your tape eating problems for beta when the, when the spool stops turning. It's because the, the grease gets gummed up. On fast forward and rewind, there's a lot of torque on here, but when it's on play, or usually play or record, um, the motor torque is very low. So all it takes is the grease to get, just, or the oil just to get a little bit dry on either this point or on the motor shaft itself, and this will start to slow down. Also, make sure you don't have any debris in any of the teeth here. Like check the teeth to make sure that there's no dirt or any debris or any grains of sand or anything because if you get a little grain of sand in here what's going to happen as it's turning is it's it's going to cause it to stop All right so make sure that the teeth are clear of sand because all it takes is you know, one little grain of sand and this thing's going to stop and then it's going to either eat the tape usually it won't eat the tape usually what will happen is it'll just stop because the rotation sensor here will stop turning, the optical sensor will stop detecting its turning, and it'll go into stop. When you hit eject, there's enough torque provided on here to wind the tape back in. If the motor were to completely stop dead and freeze up completely, you're going to end up with a tape that gets eaten. But anyway, that's that's that. To put this thing back together, we just reverse what we did to take it apart. Just drop the whole plate back in place. plate drops in place like this, sort of. Gotta make sure that you get the, the tape tension regulator arm back down through its slot. And everything is lined up, everything will drop back in place. And then you can put the screws back in. Pretty simple mechanism to work on. And a hell of a lot easier to work on when you don't have a camera that's right right where you need to have your head.
they're a lot easier to work on than this. This is a very difficult one to work on because of all the extra um, components on this particular machine. Usually these things just lift right out and you put them back in and there's there's no fiddle farting around with anything. But this one because it had the frame accurate editing, it had those extra clutches and it had those extra solenoids for controlling the tape when it was um, when it was queuing up. So there's a little bit more on this particular one than on a regular run-of-the-mill beta machine. But they do all go back together the same way. Just got to make sure that my wires aren't in the way here. They're catching me up. And of course, there's a pin that's got to go through that like that. There we go. That's how that goes back in place. Just like that. Okay, we got the shield to go back in. Not that it matters, but we'll put the shield in anyway. Oh, there's another plastic cover that goes in there too. Almost forgot about this one. Uh, this one goes in first, I think. We'll just take the shield out again and put the plastic cover back in. Plastic covers to keep the wires from getting munched into the rotating parts. So it's kind of an important piece. Not that it matters on this one because, as I say, this one's not going to be uh, not going to be spinning anytime soon. In other words, never. Put it in this way. Close it this way. This way. So that does it for this one. It um, is done. That's how you do the the real table lubricate the real table motor on this unit. I have to keep stopping and starting because even though I've got my sign, my light up sign that says on air out in front of my office to let everybody else know here that I'm recording. People don't care. They make all kinds of noise. Anyway, that's um, all I'm going to do on this one because this video was specifically to show you how to take apart the real table and how to lubricate it and say the symptom is it'll eat tapes on play or it'll play and then stop. That's the symptom. It affects all these Sonys that use this chassis with the separate motor for the real drive. Some of the later ones where they went to the 7, I forget what model it was, 711B3 or something, I forget the model anyway. They did go to a model, a cheaper model, that just used a single motor, and they used the belt drive. And uh, that the, they still have the pendulum arm, but they have their own unique issues. The ones like this that have got that separate motor to drive the take-up and supply spools, it's a very common problem. That's how to fix it. It's simple. I'm going to keep you guys in suspense for a bit, but um, you haven't seen the last of this machine yet. It will play a picture again. I guarantee it. I'm going to take a head from an SL900, SLHF900, and we're going to make it work in this one. That's for another time. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one real soon. Bye for now.